Good morning. This morning, I, I want to connect three dots for you. Hope, health, and inspiration. And I want to connect them through a story that is near and dear to my heart, and it's one that uh, I have a privilege to be involved in. It's also one that is incredibly timely uh, for our society and our world today. To start, I want to introduce you to the Green family. This is Captain Trevor Green, his wife, Debbie Green, his old, their oldest daughter, Grace, their youngest son, Noah. This is their Christmas card. A little over eight years ago, events in Afghanistan drastically changed what this picture would look like. I want you to take a close look at this picture and I want you to see what I see. Because when I received their Christmas card, I knew that the picture, the image, could have been very different. And in fact, little Noah wouldn't be in that image. It's very, very clear that Captain Green would not have been in that image. And Debbie and Grace would have had to understand how they would send a Christmas card out. So you're going to hear me talk a lot about the concept of brain hope. It's a concept that, together with the Greens and many other people from uh, universities and hospitals, we're working on. And it's a concept that you'll see in the, in, the, in the title of their book, Love, Hope, and Survival, is a key concept in my talk today. March 4th, 2006, Trevor Green's life changed. Until that time, Trevor was and is, but at that point in history, if you can wind back your clock, a force of life, six foot four, a journalist, award-winning Bloomberg Press, fluent in Japanese, elite athlete, rowing, rugby, high, high school basketball star, personifying the best of what we think it means to be a, a person in Canada making the world a better place. He leads in Afghanistan Canada's efforts as peacekeepers. This is a photo that is not too dissimilar to the day of March 4th, 2016, when Canada would come and sit down with villages of elders in Afghanistan and say, we're Canada, how can we help? What can we do? As a sign of respect, they would take their helmets off, they would lay down their sidearms and they would sit and meet with the villages and ask, what is it we can provide to help? Now on March 4th, it was the end of the day. It was hot, it was dusty. They'd done this multiple times and they decided to do one last visit to Shinke just not too far out of, in Kandahar province, not too far from the main base. They sat down, and the village all collected. You can imagine it would have been busy. You can imagine that the elders were at the front, and there were many, many people peering in to see what was going on. And as the platoon commander made the initial introductions, passed over to Trevor, to start to do his component around peacekeeping, a young 16-year-old boy slipped up behind and with a homemade fashioned axe underneath his, wool or his robe, pulled it out with all of two hands and all his might, drove it right into the top of Trevor Green's head. That was March 4th, 2006. He's, he 
Immediately, his eyes rolled back. He went down. There was a firefight because it was actually a signal of a Taliban attack. Remarkably, although the world would have expected that he should have died right there, he was alive. They transported Trevor immediately back to base, stabilized his vital signs, and then got him to an, a, an American hospital in Germany where the neurosurgeon who did the emergency neurosurgery said it was the biggest, largest brain injury he'd ever seen. They brought him back to Vancouver where Debbie had heard the news. And in Vancouver, when Debbie came to see her fiance, they told him, and this is the important part, put him in a bed and get on with your life. They told Debbie that because of the concept of false hope. So in medicine, an injury to the brain is not like a broken leg or a charley horse. An injury to the brain is a very, very, very devastating thing. And it's important that when you've had an injury to the brain, that properly you manage what to expect, that this is a life-changing thing. In this case, if you look at 2006 and you look at the image, that makes sense. Trevor's medical condition was very, very serious. In hospital, he almost died of complications four or five times. He went through an amazing recovery just to keep him alive, and then the thought was he would be in a coma or in a vegetative state. But again, as Trevor is very, very able to do, he likes to surprise people, and he woke up. And he was still Trevor. He was still determined and focused and a force of life. And Debbie told the clinical staff, you don't know Trevor. And she was right. So in the years that come, and you can see in this photo in 2013, they worked very, very hard to rehabilitate. Now importantly, Trevor had one focus goal, which is to walk again. He made it through, to walk again, he made it through everything. At one point, during massage for spasticity, his leg was broken. At another point, he had to go through and still manages the most severe post-traumatic stress disorder that I could possibly conceive. And if you want to know about this person, about the mark of the man, he absolutely forgives his detector, attacker. Now in 2015, which is now, in the summer, marked a milestone in a continued journey for Trevor that I'd like to tell you about. I want to get into a little science. So this is a slide that has a lot of images on it, and I want to just step through so you can understand how important this slide is. You see, around 2010, we started a research study because I saw Trevor's story, and I saw that the world medically told him not to expect to walk again. But Trevor was already defying the medical expectation that he might recover a bit in six months, and then you got what you got, get on with your life. In fact, Trevor was making leaps and bounds in ways that nobody could have predicted. So we came in with advanced medical imaging. And this slide shows you, first, the concept of brain plasticity. So as you're sitting in this talk, you're learning. Your brain is rewiring. That is brain plasticity. The brain has the ability inherent in itself to reorganize itself, no matter how much the injury can occur. So what Trevor decided to prove and show to the world, and what we came in and used advanced medical imaging is the simple objective picture that showed his brain rewiring. And so on the top slide, you see each of these are just shots from the left and the right side of Trevor's brain. On top, we have displayed his activity while he tries to mo move his lower limbs. So this is him trying to regain the ability to walk. 
When we first, I'll also tell you that each of these rows is a study where we track Trevor over three years, 12 times, four times a year. At the time, I would fly across the country. They would drive down from Nanaimo. We'd meet in the Royal Jubilee Hospital on a Sunday just like this. There'd be cookies, and we'd jump in an MRI. Our first image, we had to use a lift to lift Trevor out and get him into the MRI. And in fact, we could see the initial signs of brain, of brain activity. We could tell him, his doctors, his teams, in fact, there is activity there. Keep going. Around time three, Trevor and Debbie were so encouraged by watching their brain rewire that they said, surprise, no lift. Trevor, stand yourself. With Debbie's help. Six foot four, Debbie's kind of small. It was quite something to see. Around time six or seven, Trevor stood to take his vows at his wedding. Around time 10 and 11, the first images of him taking steps in parallel bars. And by time 12, he was doing laps around his house with assistance in a walker, four laps across his home. This is important because rehabilitation of brain injury right now is, is restricted, restricted to hospitals. hospitals. What, what they, they did is said, our new elite, elite sport. sport. It isn't, isn't rowing anymore, anymore. It's, it's recovering from brain injury. injury. Every day in two hours to the gym, every day in the afternoon, two hours physio, I'm going to rewire my brain. Trevor who, and Debbie, who are both authors on this paper published in an international high-ranked medical journal, also taught the world something that clinical professionals now really pay attention to, which is each morning he gets up and he imagines moving. Because all elite athletes imagine what they do before they do it. And this data at the bottom, these scans, show that he activates exactly the same areas he's rehabilitating. He doesn't have to go to hospital. It isn't costly. Each morning for 10 minutes, he visualizes. This catches the world's attention. That's Trevor's discovery. And in fact, when we compare that to a control, the control shows this pattern of activity, unchanging, and no activity here. So it truly is that his elite sport was to rewire his brain. Now, we're at a very exciting time. Because Trevor, myself, and many others, including the Royal Canadian Legion, have decided we have to take it up with technology to the next level. And the next level is to go robotic. Or as Trevor said when he, did it to, he strapped on an exoskeleton the first time to his kids, Daddy's bionic. <laughs> so this is actually September 19th at SFU in Surrey with Surrey Memorial, SFU, City of Surrey, all helping Trevor to walk for the first time in public with an, a robotic exoskeleton. Now, why this is an important story to know is that when we started to fit Trevor with an exoskeleton, which was donated by the Poppy Fund, we just came through Remembrance Day, the Poppy Fund donated all the funds to get Trevor an exoskeleton. When we started to fit him up for this, I noticed a new tattoo on his arm. He has Noah, because as I told you, Noah wouldn't exist if they'd listened to, to the medical system. And he has Grace. But then he had a mountains. And, he, and I said, whoa, that's a new tattoo. And he said, yeah, it's Everest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk to base camp. And I, and I didn't lose a beat. I said, I'll go with you. So we call. Well, actually, I started with Iron Man, and I got corrected because apparently there might be trademark, and then everybody liked Iron Soldier better. <laughs> so we call this project Iron Soldier, Mission to Everest. And there's been a long time since we've had something to hope for and believe in like this. And I can tell you that whenever I go into the hospital for anybody with brain injury, articles of Trevor are on the wall. He's inspiring countless people with brain injury, countless vets, countless people, period, by proving that he can dare to walk and going to the highest heights of the world. So we're in training now, and I want to show you one event in this summer 
that was absolutely remarkable to be a part of. So if I could, I'll play the video now. This is the first time in the history of the world somebody with brain injury used an exoskeleton to walk. That's a physiotherapist. Jay is six foot four. Trevor is a big person. Outer limits of the device. He's telling people not to help. Let him walk. The world changed that day, and it didn't even know it. You heard, maybe if you picked up the audio, how's it feel, and Trevor said, crazy. Debbie said, I haven't seen you walk that fast in a long time. I would encourage you, if you can, to look up the McLean's article that was recently written for Iron Soldier. It tells the more full-length story behind what I'm talking about today. This is Trevor and Debbie, present day, in my laboratory in Surrey Memorial Hospital. Now you'll notice that some of the fitting that we had to do was because one leg is different length than another. And when we had him standing, we needed to find a, a book, something, to offset the difference between his legs. So I rapidly, as quickly as I could, went and found the biggest, fattest neuroscience textbook I, I could. <laughs> so this picture means a lot to me. This picture symbolizes the importance of the difference between false hope and brain hope. Because in focusing on taking little steps, even after the most devastating injury, those steps have been able to add up. They've been able to add up over time to be quite a distance. Trevor has now been able to show the world that scientifically, the brain can rewire itself in amazing and unprecedented ways. He's been able to inspire a, an entire change around how we think about hope and what its importance is in health. So right now, Trevor, Debbie, myself, and many, many others are training to go to Everest. I encourage you to watch us as we hit our milestones along the way. Thank you.